So welcome back. We're doing our part two series of our homeopathy with Julia Edgeley, homeopath and holistic practitioner. My healer for my TSW and ongoing management with my eczema. So in this part, we're going to be talking all about zingers and what zingers are actually doing to our body. And this is very specific for those going through the topical steroid withdrawal and in certain phases of their healing journey at the same time. So you might not get zingers in the very early stages. You might get it sort of in the middle of your healing and you might actually get reoccurring zingers even after you've healed a little bit. So Julia, thank you so much for joining My me. Pleasure. <laughs> so great to be here with so you. So exciting. So following on from our part one series, Yes. Where we talked a lot about allergies and allergy intolerances and how to test for that that sort of thing really delving deep down into topical steroid withdrawal yes um with zingers now what are zingers and why do we get them we know it's something to do with our nerve damage could you give us some more insight that's what it is it's more to do with this is um can be from oral steroid use or it can be from topical steroid use mm -hmm. and it can be from um, a lot of people think, well, my steroid cream was very, very low in percentage, so I don't have to worry, but it's the, the, the duration you were using it. I see. So it can be the over a long period of time. So okay. basically, we know we can t we, we touch. Do you yes. know what I mean? So yes. we have to have loads of nerve endings in our skin. Yes. And I don't know if you've seen that model of, have you seen that model of the human body and yes. the size, like how big our hands are, how yeah. big our heads are, because the amount of nerve endings. Yes, I've, there. Seen, I've seen there's actually a very popular video on yeah. YouTube, and it's by, I think it's a dentist. Um, and her parents, the doctors, or whatever. Yeah. And she explains a lot about um, you know the body's vessels and and all exactly. the arteries and how actually we get TSW in certain areas that we never had eczema before, but, but yeah. because we've got a lot more nerve endings exactly. and a lot more uh, blood vessels there. Because yeah. I never had eczema on my neck, and that my neck is you yeah. know my most stubborn area with my TSW. Yeah. And the recovery of that area. And she did. She put on her video. It was sort of like. And I'll put it in the link below. Um, it was just like a, the human anatomy with all the vessels exactly. everywhere, and why we get you know the TSW is more apparent yes. there than yeah. other areas like the nose, lot, lot of the hands, the hands exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, if we did a proportion of the body where you have the nerve endings, our hands would be like twice the size of our whole body. Right. Right. Do you know what I mean our hands, our face, our neck, everything? Yes. It's a really interesting model when you see it, and you can yeah. see why you have these nerves and why it's so sensitive mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So without going into an anatomy and physiology lesson, mm -hmm. how what steroids do to our skin, it completely impairs how our skin functions. Okay. It impairs over, like I said, prolonged use. As I said in our first video, that sometimes I can understand why dermatologists have to give steroids in certain occasions, mm -hmm. because you have to avoid that infection, because yeah. that is far more dangerous yes. than uh, in their eyes than an eruption. Okay. okay? So they that's why I'm giving it. But it's over a lot of prolonged period of time they know it thins the skin. Mm -hmm. It impairs how the skin can protect itself from pathogens. Mm -hmm. It can compare how the skin repairs itself, how the skin functions, right. and the structure of the skin, it breaks it down. Uh -huh. Even oral steroids is known to cause skin atrophy. Atrophy right. is like the like yes. skin's dying, basically. Yes. Yeah. When I say dying, it's it's not gangrene, yeah. but in its function. Okay. So that's why um, that's where the zingers all come from. It's the nerve ending. So basically it's how I describe it to patients, if you had somebody who had an amputation and they have the phantom pains, yes, that's what the zingers are. Right. It's the phantom pains. Now, sometimes the zingers can be the sensations coming back, so the nerve's healing itself, or it can be just um, it's the remnants of the nerves that, the nerve endings that were there. Okay. So if you are later on in life and you've had um, eczema your whole life and you've been using steroids your whole life, and um, can you get rid of zingers? You yes. can definitely, this is what I'm going to talk about today, is tools and a resource to help really reduce those sensations. Right. So that's the aim, because what's happening is you're getting the zinger, and a lot of people, if you think of zingers are just the electric shock sensations, yeah. it's actually very, the burning for you yes. was your zingers. Oh, okay. That's, that's, that's the, yeah. yeah. So that is the type of sensation yeah. you have. So we're going to mm -hmm. talk about different sensations. Yeah. So if you, um, so I'm going to be talking about different um, remedies to reduce that, uh -huh. because if you still have it, you have a zinger, you're touching the area, you're scratching the area, or you, you're then impeding the skin barrier. Right. The skin barrier then can, put, can reconstruct, which it can with certain with lifestyle changes and mm -hmm. remedies, mm -hmm. to then protect and reduce the zingers later on. Yeah. So we're always trying to reduce that sensation so you don't touch your skin and impair the skin barrier. Brilliant. That's what okay, right. brilliant. And that is really through the remedies. I mean, that's where the remedies really kick in. That's where the therapeutic use of homeopathy okay. comes in. Because homeopathy, like I said, I can't remember if I said this in the first video, but homeopathic remedies mm -hmm. and homeopathic analysis, sometimes they can be separated. Yes. So this 
is an aspect of homeopathic analysis okay. where it's a therapeutic, which means we're not looking at the whole picture, we're just using the remedies to manage a symptom. A symptom because yeah, these symptoms right. come from a medication. So they're called in homeopathy called a drug layer. Drug layer yes. So you're not born with singers. No. They are a cause, um, they are made from a medical use, right. from med a medical medication use. Okay. So that is called a drug layer. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't it's not like your body's organically making these symptoms, no. it's been caused. Okay, so the steroids have actually yes. killed the nerve endings. Impaired the nerve Impaired endings. Impaired the nerve endings, so that when we come off the steroids and yeah. we go through our withdrawal... The body's trying to heal them. Your body's always trying to heal itself. Right. So it's always trying to balance that out. Okay. And that's where the sensations are coming back. Okay. So, um, what I want to do with homeopathy is just use a very specific remedy for that one symptom mm -hmm. because remember homeopathy works with all your symptoms but that one symptom just to reduce that sensation so that we can calm you down you're not itching the skin barrier can repair and it does remind you as well like oh my god I've got an is issue we're going to be talking a bit more about this in PTSD yeah. okay but if you're scratching you're constantly like, oh my god this is never going to go away okay and that can um, contribute to the stress response Okay, okay. And also, because is it a universal remedy that you would use for everybody for zingers? No. Or is it all very specific? Because obviously yeah. I had my specific remedies for me. Yes. Because um, you look at, like, like you said, you look at the body as a whole. Yeah. And the healing as a whole. And the individual. And the individual. Yeah. And so what might be apparent to me as a remedy could be exactly. very different to somebody else and yeah. so forth depending on you know what your analysis is yeah. and, and from their consultations. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you the top five okay. zinger remedies. Okay. I'm gonna share with you how you see this in your case or how you experience these. Okay. And what you can learn if these remedies don't seem to resonate with your symptoms, you're still then introduced to how you can identify your remedies. Because right. just to show, this is the book of homeopathic remedies. Oh. There are over three thousand remedies. Yes. So not, not all of them would be a zinger remedy, but they, you, there could be some that's out there that's more specific to you and you would actually learn that through a homeopath. Wow. And I'm going to give you the top five. Okay. And in very few cases, I will actually create a, combi a zinger combination right. of three of these okay. just to manage that that's symptom. Right, okay. So basically you're seeing of how much the zinger symptom are impacting the patient globally. Yeah. And if it's having a knock-on effect on sleep, on stress, on, on everything, on the skin mm -hmm. barrier, then I just will focus on that mm -hmm. symptom. Mm -hmm. okay. There's a few lifestyle things you can do as well oh, yes. for zingers. Yeah, I, when we were talking about food sensitivities, I mentioned sugar. Yes. So any uh, neuropathy, any neurological issues, so you know sugar can have a contributing factor. Right. Um, because you can see uh, neurological issues in, like, for example, diabetes. Yeah. So not the saying that everyone with TSW has diabetes, but we know sugar is going to be contributing to these symptoms. Right. There's also nutrients such as B1 and B12. Right. So there you're very, very important that you have to really, um, B12, it's, I would recommend supplementation because if you're yes. over the age of like 30, well it's, it's actually closer to around 50, your absorption of B12 is significantly impaired. So I would recommend so, um, sublingual supplementation of that, B1 as well, I would recommend, B vitamins are one of the supplements I would recommend everybody with TSW needs. Okay. A very good B vitamin. B vitamin, yeah. 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 And sugar. And sugar, yeah. right, yeah. You can have a bit of a split, once you've done, we said from our, um, food food video, you can have a splurge after you've done the six week detox. Yes. Uh, a splurge every so often of sugar is not the end of the world. Yeah. I know, you know yourself, you know when it's party or something like that, yeah. you know you're in balance because you can have a bit of cake and you're fine. Yes, yeah. But if you have cake every single day, uh, exactly. And you're systemic. Yep. And you're in the, you know, in, in the you're thick of You're in your... the actual TSW. Yeah. Like I call you're it, you're in the core of the TSW. Yeah. You're in the moment. It's yeah. not past. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. So the first remedy I'm actually going to be, t uh, I see is cicada. Okay. So we're going to, it's going to be in the notes how to okay. spell these. And yeah. It comes from all in the description below. Um, it's a plant. Uh -huh. And the first thing about cicale is that it feels like electric shocks. Okay. So you get people, they feel like the sparks coming off of their yeah. skin. They yeah. get a bit jerky. Yeah. So that is a cicale symptom. So that uh -huh. is how cicale is manifested in practice. Now there's a few things that will make a cicale symptom worse. Uh -huh. And that is, um, there we go, here we go. It's a lot worse from heat. So when you get people who in summer they get the sparks or after a shower they get the sparks. Mm -hmm. Um, that would be a cicale symptom. So if your if your zingers are more of an electric shock, mm. that would be cicale. Okay. Because I think these zingers can really wake you up at night as well. Yeah. Not to say that we have. They're just coming out like that. But I remember having that sort of you know two o'clock in the morning sort of burn or buzz yeah. as it were on my yeah. cheeks and yes. it would literally wake me up and then that was it. I couldn't actually sleep anymore and then that would sort of stimulate the itching as well at the same yep. time and then you know uh, the stress of it and the stress of not sleeping and yeah. you know not being able to sleep you know yeah. I mean that's it's just this vicious cycle that just goes on and on and on which yeah. you just think is just 
total nightmare to be honest. And that's the thing you mentioned burning. Everyone thinks zingers are just electric shocks. It can be um, the next one. For example, yeah. the next remedy I'm going to talk about yeah. is an example of it can be burning. Yeah. It can be tingling. Yes. It can be ants under the skin. That's it can the, be electric yeah. shocks. That's why you're burning was your zinger. That, that, that feeling that there's the ants crawling underneath your exactly. skin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you just don't feel comfortable in your own skin. No. I mean, I remember I could never actually even sit down and have a conversation without constantly moving around, trying to distract myself from yeah. scritch, scratching or feeling my, you yeah. know, having that sensation of my skin being normal, you know, I've yeah. got something going on in my body the whole time. Yeah, the, you it's might recognize the rest next remedy. Then. Okay then. <laughs> the next remedy is coca. Coca, yes. So, it's the coca <laughs> yeah. so uh, coca is basically, it's that sensation yeah. of crawling under the skin. So you right. think, oh my God, it feels like there's insects all okay. under my skin. Yeah. And every time I touch it, the insect moves. Yeah. So it's a prickling, it's uh -huh. hot, pro uh, it can have burning as well. So yeah. if you have burning, but it feels like there's something under the skin, yes. that's coca. That's coca. Okay. That's coca. Okay. Okay. So right. that's why that people, so some people are like, well, sometimes I might have an um, electric shock, some things that can be it, them, the insect. Mm -hmm. You can have the, these remedies at different times. Okay. Remember, we're just managing this symptom. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. So the next remedy uh -huh. is agar. agar so yeah. agar is from is a mushroom and it right. can feel like that it's frostbite, chill veins. Do you have chill veins? I used that, I, I had very cold fingertips, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, very cold fingertips. That's agar. So and it yeah. feels like chill, chill veins and it's brought on by cold. Well actually this brings me on to something yeah. that I completely forgot to address, but it's actually, you know, the fact that we can't thermoregulate. Yes. You know, so yeah. does that help with the thermoregulation? Exactly, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So basically if you were like, okay, actually it's heat, actually it's cold, they're the symptoms uh -huh. that you want to write down. Okay. So if you're worse cold and it feels like chill veins, yes. it's sharp, like, yes. um, chill veins, how do you describe chill veins? Like knife. Yes. Kind of going yeah, yeah, over. Yeah. That's agar. That's agar. That would be okay. your remedy yeah. for that. Because I remember in the summer I was freezing cold, yeah. but I was sweating, you know, I couldn't sweat very yeah. well, and then, you know, just I couldn't thermoregulate, or I'd get Did you get it in hot. your hands? I just remember it being very cold in my hands, yeah. but then everything else was burning. Yeah, you know? that's actually the you got that the summer that we didn't do that. Remember, was the, that was the first summer. Yeah, where it was yeah. just too much at the moment, and too then much. we kicked in the dodge. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, happy days. <laughs> <laughs> the memories. <laughs> so the next one I would recommend is hypericum. Okay. So hypericum is all for nerve damage. So we're not necessarily going on the symptoms. We're just going on that your nerves are damaged. Okay. So if you can't really think of like I can't see any of these remedies, you call it hypericum. It's St. John's wort. Okay. And so it's any um, nerve, da it's like you give this for phantom pain if anyone has yes. a, a limb amputation. So okay. it's very similar to fingers or nerve damage in the skin. So okay. it's hypericum. Okay. okay, great. So the final one is one that I can't pronounce. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it up on the screen for you. I can't pronounce it. It's F Y Z G. Okay. F -Y -Z -G. So, so it's jamal seeds. <laughs> okay. And it's basically, it's a very specific one. It's only the upper body mm -hmm. and it's like a prickling. So, have you ever had prickly heat? Yes. Yes. Oh, you know prickly me, prickly heat. So it feels yeah. like um, it feels like ne needles all over the upper body. Yes. Okay. That's this remedy that I can pronounce. Okay. Jamal seeds. Okay. So they would be the remedy. So if you feel you need to mix and match these, it's not classical homeopathy. So mm -hmm. some homeopaths are like, oh no, you can't mix remedies. I have seen that as being beneficial in the long term for okay. the patient. To mix the remedies. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just stick with about three. Okay. Or you can have the three separate remedies like, okay, when I have my spark, I take that. Okay. And the, the aim of the remedy would be that you take the, you know, you get the spark and then start the itch and then you get more sparks and yes. more sparks. It kind of starts a cascade effect. And that's okay. what the remedies will do. It reduce, it dials down the intensity of it. Okay. And then it shortens the crisis. Okay. So dials down the intensity, shortens yeah. the crisis. So you can actually go, okay, breathe through it. I'm not going to itch. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you very much for your singers. That's wonderful. Um, and if you want to see the other parts of the series, then carry on watching. Um, yeah. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. <laughs>